Mass transfer coefficients is the main topic of this lecture. And this is actually an introduction. We're not going to see that much into the calculation of the coefficients. But it's very important that you understand why do we need mass transfer coefficients, what are they, and how to calculate them. So far, we have been analyzing mass transfer as molecular diffusion. Actually, we even understood that Fick's law is great for this and that we can have several specific cases such as unimolecular diffusion or equimolar counter diffusion that helps our mathematical models to be solvable in some cases in which we can find them in engineering. What I didn't show you guys is that there are many cases in which the equations will get very sick, very strange and confusing, but still you are modeling a molecular diffusion approach. What I want to show you here, guys, is a easier way. And I love it because some of my students say, well, it's not that easy. And yes, I know it's not that easy. But compared to actually doing crazy equation solving and modeling, I think it's a very straightforward approach. And this is the convective mass transfer approach, which assumes mostly the bulk velocity of the fluid. And we have many applications such as pipes, gas absorption, cylinders, spheres, flat plates, and so on. The main idea is to relate a mass transfer coefficient versus the driving force. As stated here, in some cases of convective mass transfer, we may be uh, possible to model and calculate the rate of mass transfer in this specific case by solving the differential equations, as I was telling you, very crazy equations obtained from the mass and momentum and energy and whatever thing you can use to model that. Uh, if you get them through a, let's say, a logical approach, you will be able to solve this mass transfer approach. Actually, we have two main applications, which you may find in a typical mass transfer course, you will see the, let's say, how we slowly go from, we go from molecular diffusion using fixed law, then we solve these two approaches, and then we go fully convective mode. Now, this is a very quick review, so we're not going to include these two cases. We're going to go directly to the mass transfer via uh, convective and coefficients. But let me explain you a little bit on these cases. Uh, we are talking about absorption of a gas in laminar liquid film falling down a long wall, which is here. The liquid is flowing. This is the wall. As you can imagine, you have uh, gradients of concentration, you have gradients or profiles on velocity and temperature according to the distances. Of course, when you are stick to the wall, you know that the velocity is the slowest of all compared to the farther away area. Here is the fastest velocity. We have also the concentration profile, which you should expect if this is going from liquid to the gas phase, high concentration to low concentration. And if you're talking about temperature, well, I don't know the temperature right here, but if the wall is heated and the ambient or atmosphere is low in temperature, you will expect a decrease in temperature. So as you can imagine, we're talking about mass, heat, momentum transfers into a single application, which seems to be very uh, simple, right? It's just a liquid flowing through a wall. Another example will be dissolution of a solid coated on a flat plate in a liquid flowing over the plate. So you have the flat plate, you've got the liquid flowing over this plate. This is the plate and you have the solid which is coated and it starts dissolving. That's another crazy approach because you have once again a profile of velocities, you have a profile on temperatures, not always, but you may have. And of course, the most important part, the profile of concentrations. But guys, the real cases we are going to be solving because these are not so engineering processes. Of course, you can find them a engineering approach. But in real life, for instance, gas liquid contact in a packed or plate column will be crazy to solve via molecular diffusion or via fixed law. Also, the solution of a solid in a mechanical steer vessel. I know it seems very easy. It's literally just a tank and agitation. But one thing is 
how the physical processes are easy to uh, get or compare them versus the model. Try modeling this thing with the basic loss will be very, very difficult. Theoretical calculations for the rate of mass transfer. In general, I will say this is true. Theoretical calculations are kind of hard. It's way better just to go to the experimental approach. And the main idea, guys, I wanted to show you here is that instead of we working through theoretical models, we're going to pick already existing approaches or experimental approaches that are actually working in the engineering fields. And I know many of you which loves uh, modeling from zero, all the mathematical equations and arriving in order to understand this on a 100% basis, will get a little bit frustrated to say, okay, I accept that this is the equation and I will use it. I'm, I was like you guys when I was a student, I hated this. I was always into why is this equation working? And because we had dimensionless number was kind of hard to relate to real life. And I was very, very upset until I saw that this is the most convenient way in real life. You will see this a lot. Sometimes you cannot model everything from zero. And this is one of the first cases you will see. I want to use this analogy, and actually we are going to see later on some analogies, uh, for heat transfer. Remember, if you have been taking heat transfer before, or you are taking it at the same time as mass transfer, the rate of mass transfer, sorry, heat transfer, is typically related to this value. The heat transfer coefficient, the area, and the driving force, which will be temperature. You should be familiar with this. If you are not familiar with this, Make no worries, probably you are kind of familiar with MC delta T. It's kind of similar like that, but in here we are, we are including uh, distances versus mass right here. The coefficient H was the interest of heat transfer. We wanted to always be able to calculate H, especially for our engineering applications. And H, or the coefficient, typically dependent on the temperature of the fluids, pressures in which we're working, the viscosity of one fluid or two fluids, their densities, their velocities, the figures being analyzed. If, if we were talking about a pipe or a heat exchanger or a shell, a tank and so on. And we learned that we could simply solve for each value and plug the value here and get the area given the difference in temperature and we will get the heat requirements. It was so beautiful. And that's what we're going to do here for mass transfer. When a fluid is flowing outside a solid surface, such cylinder, sphere, plate, pipe, I don't know, whatever you can imagine, we are going to be talking about force convection. And if we talk about force convection, well, this, as you can imagine, is convective mass transfer. We can express the rate of convective mass transfer or technically speaking from now on the rate of mass transfer from the surface to the liquid or fluid uh, as follows literally just say like this i want to calculate my rate of interest mass transfer rate with this given um let's say coefficient or uh, not coefficient well yeah the coefficient that relates my mass transfer which should be the hardest part and the difference of concentration, which I know is my driving force as in temperature, this was the driving force. So it seems very easy, very straightforward. You can also see this as NA times A, the area, and you will see, see either a coefficient, which is alone or a coefficient, which is with an area and the driving force which also tries to be analogous to this heat transfer area. You can find it as that as well. And here it goes the analogy I already told you, but just let it be more formal. Rate of mass transfer, or let's say rate of any transfer for heat will be Q and for mass transfer will be flux of A. Technically, this is flux of heat. Driving forces will be change in driving force, which will be temperature for heat and concentration or partial pressures or molar fractions. So that's the interesting part on concentration that you can define it in several ways. 
and a constant, technically speaking, A coefficient. For heat, this was the thermal equivalent. And for mass transfer, it will be Kc or whatever value you have here that helps you to relate to this equation. As with heat transfer, Kc has correlations for several figures. I don't know if you remember from heat transfer, but you had some correlations for flows inside pipes, flows outside pipes, flows inside a shell, flow through, I don't know, an evaporator or fins or plates and so on. Make no worries, we're going to see how to calculate Kc. And of course, what we ultimate want is the molar flux right here. So please remember mass transfer problems involving flowing fluids. Remember, we're talking about fluids, mostly gases and liquids are often solved using mass transfer coefficients, which are pretty similar to those or analogous to those of heat transfers. For mass transfer, a composition driving force will replace the temperature. So either change in concentration, change in molar composition, change in partial pressures will do. Because composition can be expressed in, well, yeah, literally what I was telling you, uh, mole fraction, mass volume, so that's interesting, it's concentration in mass. This is concentration, mass, mass, concentration in volume, volume, if we're talking about a gas, concentration on mole, mole, uh, partial pressures, concentrations, difference, and mole fraction difference. So there are many ways, that's what I don't like that much in mass transfer, is that it gets a little bit nasty with all the types or ways we can calculate concentration. And if concentration is given in mole per liter, which from now on we are going to see a lot, we can select this example. And the units of Kc are, you can imagine, mole divided by time, area, and driving force. Which you will see, or if you remember from your heat transfer, it's the inverse of the resistance. Meaning that if Kc, if Kc is high, you should expect a molar flux or rate to be high, meaning that you don't need to have that much uh, driving force in order to achieve high values. Of course, if you're talking about a mass transfer operation, you will want to have high values. If you have low values, this means that you will need to either change the concentration or the area. And you know, area typically is related to volume and volume of the equipment is typically related to cash. So of course, you want to see which KC values are optimal. 